The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. My name's Mike, and in a previous segment, we hooked up some LCDs to an Arduino and ran some example code. And today, we're gonna add an LCD to an earlier Arduino project, the temperature-controlled fan. This measures the room temperature and switches on a fan automatically if the room gets too hot. By adding an LCD, we can actually display the temperature and also get some feedback so we can add some controls too. We're gonna use a 16 by two character LCD and a potentiometer and switch for the controls. Now, because some of the Arduino pins are already being used by our existing circuit, we're gonna have to hook up our LCD to some different pins than we used last time. But that's fine, we can adjust for that in the code later. I'm starting off with the smaller components first, and I've also marked up where I plan to put some of the others later. Here's our old circuit. I'm using ribbon cable to join the two halves, and that's really useful when you need to join a bunch of connections that are next to each other. And you can always split out the individual wires if you need to join pins that are in different places too. I'm bending the mounting lugs of the potentiometer so that it will lay flat on our protoboard when we go to solder the pins. Then I can bend it round to the other side of the board and solder it down, and that should give it plenty of support. The button goes in the holes that I marked earlier. And I like to use a wedge or a chisel tip on my soldering iron. I find that it transfers heat a bit better than a conical tip. I'm trying to heat the back side of the pin and add solder from the opposite side. And this helps to ensure that the solder flows over the whole joint. Some of these pins could probably do with a little bit more solder, but that's okay. It's easy to go back and add a little bit more, and I actually had a good rhythm going here. This pot makes it a bit awkward to get to those last pins, so it's usually a good idea to place all your parts down first before you solder anything, just to check for any obstructions that you might run into later. Now I'm joining up the ribbon cable from the other circuit. And this angle is a bit awkward because of the camera, but tweezers definitely help. I've already added solder to the pads and I've tinned the wires too, so I can join them just by adding some heat to reflow the solder. Last wire fights me a little bit and I should have secured the board a bit better. Sometimes even just putting something heavy on top to stop it moving around can help. And there we have it. So I started with our fan control sketch and here at the top is where I've copied from the LCD example and this is where I had to change the pin variables to match my wiring because like I mentioned before some of the pins were already being used. The rest of the code has been changed slightly too. The main additions are for the potentiometer and the button. You can read the position of a potentiometer in much the same way as a thermistor using a analog pin. This gives us a value between zero when the pot is all the way to the left, and 1023 when it's all the way to the right. I want to use the potentiometer to control my trigger point for the fan, but I only want it to change by about 10 or 15 degrees. So I'm going to use the map command. The way that works is you give it a value to map, which is our potentiometer reading. You give it uh, its upper and lower bounds. Um, I've used three and 1020, uh, just to give a bit of room in case the pot doesn't get all the way to each uh, extreme. And then you can give it a pair of target bounds. Um, in this case, it's the lowest and the highest that I'd ever want the trigger point to be set. So now when I turn the pot all the way to the left, I'll get 20 degrees. And when it's all the way to the right, I'll get 35 degrees. And I, I can select anything in between. For the button, I wanted it to switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And the way to do that is to detect the state change. You can find example code for this in file examples digital state change detection. Basically we don't need to know what the button's doing all the time, only when it's going from being not pressed to pressed. We do that by reading the button 
and then comparing it to the value that we got last time that the loop ran and if it's different and also currently low then we know the button was pressed and so we increment a counter every time we press this button the counter increments by one and this line checks if the counter is even it does this by dividing by two and comparing the remainder to zero if it is zero then it's an even number and if not it's odd so now we can do something if the button counter is even and something else if it's odd and it will change between being odd and even every time the button's pressed because we're adding one each time so i'm using this to change the temperature reading from celsius to fahrenheit each time the button's pressed the last new addition to our code is the lcd function now this prints some information to our lcd and also displays a little animation to show when the fans are running that's about it for the changes to the code so i think it's time to give a quick demonstration okay so i've got my fan here and it's plugged into the same remote socket as before down here is my fan controller and you can see from the screen that we're at 26 degrees celsius here on the top row there if i press the button changes to fahrenheit so that's around 79 fahrenheit and on the bottom row it says our trigger point so that's 83 Fahrenheit. So the fan won't turn on until the room temperature gets above 83 Fahrenheit. And we can adjust that with our potentiometer. So if I turn that all the way to the right now, so 95 degrees, and obviously we'd want the fan on if it was ever that hot. If I turn it back now, back down to the minimum value, 68, and you'll see the fans come on. And that's now because uh, the room temperature is higher than our trigger point. So we can actually adjust that back up now if i put it back to 83 then the fan goes off so it works and that's how you can add an lcd to an arduino project what are your favorite types of display to use with arduino let me know on the element 14 community at element14.com forward slash the learning circuit where you'll also find all the code and schematics that we use today thanks for watching